Green definitely means go in this 69 Roadrunner. Nineteen sixty nine Plymouth Roadrunners were very cool cars, even in their base model configuration. These cars came with a three hundred and eighty three cubic inch V eight and a four speed transmission standard, and they were marketed as mid sized cars that were short on price but long on performance. However, in mid nineteen sixty nine, Plymouth offered a much hotter version of the Roadrunner, featuring a hopped up 440 cube V8 and half a speed shop full of go-fast parts installed from the factory and called it the A12 package. The result is the car you see here, one of the 1432 A12s built in 1969. Now this is what a muscle car is all about. You start with a mid-size family sedan, gut all the fancy stuff, drop in a high-strung 440 cubic inch V8, top it with three two-barrel carburetors, hook it to a four-speed manual transmission, give it some short gears so it gets out of the hole real good, and then paint it a bright color and hang on. This thing also has a special lift-off fiberglass hood to give it better airflow. The only downside about that hood is it never had hood hinges, so you actually need to have a friend come along if you want to check the oil. Roadrunners were never intended to be fully loaded luxury rides. These were sold to cost conscious buyers who wanted to go fast but didn't really care about power windows or air conditioning. Now, of course, Plymouth built the fancier GTX for those buyers. The Roadrunner A12 was factory upfitted with the kinds of parts that a weekend drag racer would buy. The most obvious element of the A12 is the blacked out lift-off fiberglass hood with the giant functional hood scoop. This lightweight, non-hinged hood required pins on all four corners to keep it down. And the idea was pretty simple. Hood hinges added weight, fiberglass was light, a big scoop fed the hungry 440 fresh air, and it all added up to a faster car. The 440 was warmed over as well. They named the three Holly two barrel carbs the six barrel system and they sat on a special Edelbrock aluminum intake manifold. The heads featured big valves with polished stems pushed through high rate springs by a high lift camshaft and they combined with the pistons to produce a ten and a half to one compression ratio. The stout bottom end and big displacement churned out 390 horsepower and 490 pound feet of torque which were easily in the mighty 426 Hemi's neighborhood. In fact, the NHRA rated the 440A12 at 410 horsepower, so it's easy to see why these cars ran as hard as they did. Behind the 440 is an A833 four-speed manual transmission in our car, but you could get an automatic, and the rear axle is a Dana 60 unit loaded with four 10 to one rear gears straight from the factory. The rubber meets the road through basic black 15 inch steel heavy duty wheels and the A12s rolled on factory installed red line tires or red streak wide boots as they were called in the ads back in 69. No fancy hubcaps or shiny wheels for this monster. And we dig the red lines and black wheels on this code 97 rally green A12 from the brothers collection even if the tires on this car aren't the factory originals. Inside, the A12 is about as basic as it gets. It's truly a purpose-built street fighter with nothing extra to add weight and slow it down. It's got a bench seat, a floor shifter, the tachometer, and an AM FM radio. The result was the ability to click off mid 13 second quarter mile times in a car that won the Motor Trend Car of the Year award. Cars like these have lots of stories to tell. How about you? Do you have any cool muscle car stories you'd like to share? Why don't you post them up on our Facebook page or in our online forum at musclecaroftheweek.com. And as always, we appreciate you watching Muscle Car of the Week.